So today on Drummers Getting Donuts, we're going to pick up my friend Glenn Sobel. Glenn and I have known each other for almost 30 years now. And uh, we were friends in high school and also roommates in college. And he's gone on to be voted the number one hard rock drummer in Drum Magazine recently. He's Alice Cooper's drummer. And he also filled in on seven hours notice for an ailing Tommy Lee with Motley Crue. Pretty impressive. So anyways, we're gonna pick Glenn up, go get some donuts, and we're gonna have a jam and have some fun. And uh, we'll see you in a minute. All right, we're at Glenn's house. We're gonna go get him. What are you doing here? <laughs> What's up, man? How are you? What's going on? Let's go. Do you want to take a look at the drum room real quick? Or? Yeah, I got a little couple things up. So. Right here. This is where it all happens. Well, this is where it all gets stored. What are you playing now? DW? D Dub. I am D Dub. Wow. That's the 24. This is the 22 I got in the case. Nice. And I said I gotta grab a floor tom, right? Here's yeah. your old Yamaha. Yeah, that's from way back. That drum has been around, man. So we're going to your favorite donut shop. Well yeah. <laughs> so what's the what's the one place that you would uh, wanna go to? Miss Donut? Right down Sherman Way. Times you see a drummer driving down the street and he's doing this on a steering wheel. You've been doing that for a long time. So, anyways, today on the show, I wanted to sort of go into our history a little bit, man. You remember I met you, I was at summer school. Remember this uh, guy, the guy who said, Hey, man. He said, Hey, foo, this is my friend Mike. He plays drums too. I remember when I met you, man, you were wearing, I think, a cutoff Guitar Center shirt. I remember that shirt. Yeah, the it was like the Guitar Center 25th anniversary t-shirt, yeah. I remember, uh, before we started hanging, I came to your talent show. Right. And you, you had that group offbeat. Yeah, the senior talent show. Now, you came to that. I think that was, yeah, my senior year. Your, our senior year of high school. So that was the second year in a row we did that. Sure. That was a cool group, man. That was actually kind of influential because uh, at Taft, man, in my senior year, I put together something with Stefan Storacci and Christian and Chris Teal. T yeah, right. Yeah. You told me about that. That's right. So You did an all-drum act. But you guys were cool, man. You had like a whole uh, double bass drum setup with two drum sets. Right. Two drum sets, four percussion setups. And at the very end of the whole thing, Joel Singer and I, that was my drum buddy, who I talked to once in a while still, we did a double drum solo, worked it out note for note, all the visual stuff. We did it like thinking about the style of Phil Collins and Chester Thompson doing their double drum stuff, like on Genesis's Three Sides Live record, right. or, or um, the Seconds Out record, which was, I think that was Phil and Bill Bruford. Bruford. Yeah. yeah. Copy was like all the, the greatest hits, but I was way into, in high school, you know, we were listening to all this stuff that a typical high school kid might not be expected to listen to. We were listening to him going to see Vinny Colaiuta, David Garibaldi, uh, Richie Morales. The first time we went to the Baked Potato was in 87. That was back, going back. What was that Guitar Center? Was it a Guitar Center in the back parking lot we went to a clinic? It was a benefit Well, clinic. Guitar Center of Hollywood. I'm the guy with the memory, right? I remember every little thing. That was 87. We went to the Mark Craney Drum Benefit. Right. And I recorded the whole thing on a boombox. That was crazy. Like that was July, middle of summer, just hot. Now the and the lot. whole yeah, in the back parking lot, the whole thing was like five hours. I think it was a long event because you had uh, Greg Bissonette was playing, Steve Smith, Vinnie Coliuta, Carmine and Vinnie apiece. You had Terry Bozio, Ricky Lawson was playing, Myron Grumbacher. So everybody did a solo and took some questions, and that was just a long day, man. But I had the whole thing on cassette tape, and that was like a very influential day, getting to watch all those guys play. And I transferred the cassette to MP3 file a long wow. time ago, yeah. I'd like to hear that again. I remember uh, Terry Bozio did this roll around the drums, and you can hear Dan Gillen in the background yeah. going, whoa! Right, like the whole place did that. Yeah, I remember that, that moment, yeah. 
yeah, in high school, I went to my first NAMM show, and that's probably the thing that made me say, like, oh, yeah, I want to really do this for real, like, pursue being a professional drummer. Probably because it's the, the hang and seeing everybody play. That kind of sealed the deal, in a way, in my mind. Yeah, I remember you showed up ready to do business, man. You were serious. You had, like, a business card. Did you have to sneak in the first time? Well, yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't call it exactly sneaking in, but close. Yeah, I had these uh, these fake business cards, which now to, nowadays that's easy to do. But back then, if you had a business card, you could pretty much get in. You'd pay, like, the $25 fee, last-minute registration, plus the business card, and you were in. Ready to do business. Yeah, so I probably did that at least the first two years of going to that. And we were roommates for a while in the dorms, man. You remember? You used to have your drums set up in your bedroom oh, in the dorms. Oh, man, how did I get away with that? I think the girl upstairs, there was one girl upstairs who was not happy with that. <laughs> well, no, there, that was a girl down the hall. Yeah, I mean, rightfully so. But I was not the only guy that did that. There were other drummers that lived in the dorms. But I ended up practicing on like a Friday night when there's parties and things going on or I'd have a break uh, between like say 10 and 11 a.m. I'd go back and practice really quick because no one else was around. It was it was a challenge, but you know what? You can't stop a drummer. We used to rehearse at Target Studios. It was the closest place to us. With Bourbon Street. Yeah. Yeah. That was your high school band that actually... We, we carried it on for quite a while. You guys asked me to join a little bit later, but... Yeah, I joined it in senior year of high school. I, I credit that band to really pulling me back towards the, the rock, the hard rock thing, because I had gone through this, you know, jazz purist kind of phase, just listening to the fusion and kind of putting down rock and hard rock, but then I joined that band. It, it reminded me, it was like, oh yeah, music is supposed to be fun, and people are coming to parties to see us play, and, yeah, don't lose this part of music. The fact that it's gotta be fun. About the songs and the, the attitude and the vibe, you know, it's it's something that I feel very grateful to, to have had that experience playing in a band with you and right. and and just being able to play parties and we, we played some good ones. Some, we had some, some good parties. Crazy man. parties back in the day. <laughs> Cops showing up and people getting pushed in the pool and, and uh, we got a lot of that on video somehow yeah Bourbon Street was a good party <laughs> band man let's take a break let's go get some donuts all right donuts here we are hey, how are you? I'll try one of these uh, sprinkled purple ones I'm always a sucker for the old-fashioned glazed ones too yeah. you want coffee? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll take just a regular coffee. Do you want ice coffee? You have ice coffee? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Can we get two of those? Yeah. No problem. I'm sorry, I have that. No problem. 